standing place as we give thanks unto the Lord. Psalm 105 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him, sing hymns to him. Talk of all his wondrous work. Glory in God's holy name and let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, you are children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord. He is our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Shall we pray? Jehovah God, we pause just acknowledging you as King of all kings and Lords of all lords. We come with praise and thanksgiving on our lips today, knowing that every good gift comes from you, recognizing that you are awesome, you are wonderful, you are all powerful, but you are our redeemer and our friend. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will fill this place. We ask that you will remove and confound every spirit that isn't unlike, that isn't like you. We pray that you alone will be lifted up and glorified and magnified today. And throughout all the praises and testimonies and everything that is done today, may you alone receive the praise, the honor, and the glory. We ask all these things through Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I just want to say a very special welcome to everyone. Welcome to our music day. And I just want to say, by everybody looks so beautiful. The sun, well, kinda is out. And everybody's in their beautiful summer colors and you all look so beautiful from looking down from up here. So. I just want to say welcome. We have a fantastic day in store for you. You've chosen the best place to be today. Amen. Amen. Um, do we have any visitors here today? Do we have any visitors? We always have visitors. Tommy, you're not a visitor. Amen. Can you stand, please? Can our visitors please stand? Amen. Thank you for coming. Um, another visitor here. Hi, welcome to Balaam. And welcome to Balaam as well. Ushers, do we have some gifts that we can give to our visitors? We don't want people to leave here empty handed. Amen. Amen. Okay. And I just want to leave with you all a poem just to make you feel extra special this morning. We're glad you came to join with us in our worship time today. We hope that you will feel God's love in a new, refreshing way. For you're so welcomed in this place and we hope you'll come again to join with us in fellowship and to make some special friends. Happy Sabbath everyone and welcome to Balaam's Music Day.
here. All right. Yep. Hi. I'm a sit. Good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's so good to see you all here today. And what a great day it's turned out to be. This is full of surprises. Well, at least for one of my good friends, I'd like you all to meet. My name is Phoebe Knapp, but many of you don't even know who I am. Phoebe, we will Phoebe, get to Phoebe, it's a We will time. get to know you better in a What's by that? and by. What's now, that? isn't that a blessed assurance? Welcome to the day. Is it time? Can we go in? Oh, yes, I'll go in. I was just introducing the program. But you can carry on and you can come in when you are ready, okay? All right. Fellow saints, welcome, welcome to the day, to coin a phrase. We are going to highlight today the incredible life and work of an incredible lady. I am trusting you are going to learn a little bit about the contribution she has made, not only to our service, but to thousands of services around the world. You see she's in there today. I'd like to see if we can catch her doing what she has done her entire life. Something that she does best. Come on in and have a look. I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh. What, what is it? Phoebe, what's happening? Ma'am, I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt your session. Um, I, I, um, I'm actually here on quite some important business. Well, what can be more important than the most high's business? <laughs> Tell me that. Oh, that, that's true. So I better get straight to it. I have been sent down by the national press. You've become, well, quite a national treasure. Your songs are sung really throughout the world and people are inspired by them to lead a better life. Well, unfortunately, well, no one knows much about you. So, and that contribution that you make on a daily basis and the sacrifices that accompany that. So uh, I'm here to reveal all. If I may, Fanny J. Crosby, mm -hmm. writer, the most prolific writer of songs and hymns of all time. Writer of over 9,000 songs. Songs that are sung heartily wherever Christian songs are sung, without exception. This is your life. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> Take a seat, please, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Not quite what we expected. Thank you. But that's what you get for springing surprises on a woman approaching her 95th birthday. While, ca while Fanny catches her breath, I'm sure there are a few of you who are still not quite sure who she is. Well, 
Most of you are likely to sing her songs every week. And today, we'll sing a few more and get to know a bit more about the inspiration and story behind some of the favorites and most popular. Perhaps the most appropriate one to begin with would be the one that she was just completing before we interrupted her, and one of her many writing partners, William Doan. To God be the glory. Can we all stand and sing? music to that song and it's one of the most popular and cited of all hymns but it wasn't always that popular especially in the United States but it did find life in the UK Methodist Church when Ira Sankey one of Fanny's most favorite collaborators 
decided to use that song as part of his crusade. And then in 1954, well after Fanny had died, Billy Graham decided to use that song as part of his campaign. And it is then when they realized they had a gem. To God be the glory. Amen. Well, I am so sorry for giving you such a shock, Fanny. Would you rather I called you Fanny, Francis, or Mrs. Alistair? Well, my name is Francis Alstein, and I use Alstein in all my legal and business affairs. But for my hymn writing, I use Crosby. So, you can call me Fanny. Okay, all right. So, Fanny Crosby. Yes. This is your life. You were born Francis Jane Crosby on the 24th of March in the year of our Lord, 1820, in New York, New York City. And unfortunately, at the tender age of six weeks, tragedy struck. Yes, at just six weeks, I caught a cold, which caused the inflammation of my eyes. We called the, my doctor, but he was away, so a locum came. And he put mustard poultices in my eyes, you know, to help with the inflammation and that. And um, they leaked into my eyes and I got immediate blindness. Well, later to find out that he was a, he was a quack and no medical training at all. So, ma'am, what happened to him? Well, we don't know. He disappeared from the village. Well, in the same year that Fanny's father died, her mother Eunice began to work as a maid to support the family. At the tender age of eight, Fanny actually wrote her very first poem, and it goes a little something like this. Oh, what happy soul I am, although I cannot see, I have resolved that in this life, contented, I will be. Fanny went on to write many more poems, even being commissioned by senators and presidents to show forth her talent. It's quite amazing, I, I must say, quite amazing. Of all the songs that she wrote, one of her favorites would be the next. Fanny wrote between five and nine thousand hymns. To, we don't know exactly how many because she was so modest. She wanted to preserve her modesty. She didn't want her name to be written across the hymn book so many times. Fanny, my dearest friend, I, I do try to emulate, you know? <laughs> I remember when Remember, Fanny, when I came to you the very first time and I played the music for you. I played the music for you. I, I asked you, Fanny, what do you think of this sound? And she came up instantly with the very first verse. Blessed assurance, Jesus is about to sing. Please join me because I know the choir will sing it very well. Do you remember, Fanny? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do remember that day.
as the choir comes together. I asked Sheila, I specifically asked Sheila if we could sing this song as part of Fanny J. Crosby uh, Remembrance Celebration. We're going to sing an arrangement of this song that came to me in 2013 and I want to share the reason why with you choir. Um, and as many of you know in 2012 uh, my mum was knocked down on a zebra crossing December 2012 and from that day onwards our lives changed and some of your lives changed and mum spoke very few words after that very few words uh, over the next two three four months uh, we she eventually didn't speak any coming February, March, April, May. And one day she was trying to say something. And my brothers and my sister were there. And we didn't know what she was trying to say. Asked dad, we didn't know what she was trying to say. She was going, mm -mm 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 -mm. and we just did not know what she was trying to say. And we left. But Glenn, one of the older brothers, he went back and he came out and said, she wasn't saying anything. She was singing. She was singing this song. And this song, the same time I was writing, I was rearranging it. And I had her in mind in the way that she expresses the message in this song. And by God's grace, this arrangement has actually gone on to be an award-winning arrangement praise the lord um i want to share it and we have our singers here from balaam to share with you blessed assurance be in the moment be in the spirit of the message it's in a gospel style it's also in a choral style we ask you please be blessed
Now, Fanny, you're a woman of, I don't know, immense faith and really great inspiration. But having been touched by tragedy so early on in your life, how do you remain so positive? You see, my brother, not having my sight, I have to rely on God so much more. I recall on one occasion, I was at home and funds were so low. I had nothing in my purse, not a penny. So what, I, what was I to do? I got on my knees and I spoke to God. I said, God, I do not know where to go to raise this money, but I lead me, Lord, lead me, and I will follow you. And then there was a knock on the door and on my doorstep, there was a stranger. And he said, Fanny, all the work you do in the community, this is for you. And he put a crumpled up bit of paper in my hand. It was $5, the exact amount I had prayed for. And, this, and the salvation, the words just flooded my soul. All the way, my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his faithful mercies who through life have been my guide?
leading Fanny in all aspects of her life. With her father passing at a very young age, her mother's hard work paid off. While Fanny enjoyed writing poetry, as a child, she also zealously memorized the Bible. Memorizing five chapters a week, she could recite all of the books of Moses, the Proverbs, the Gospels, and many of the Psalms. And all this without the invention of Braille. Despite her blindness, Fanny truly was a blessed child of God. At the age of 15, Fanny went to the recently founded New York Institute for the Blind, which became her home for 23 years, 12 as a student and 11 as a teacher. It was there she met and married Alexandra Van Alstein, considered one of New York's finest organists, who wrote music for many of her hymns. In all things, let us give God the praise. It is a wonderful song, one I am most proud of. So the next song we're gonna hear, it's one of your favorites, but it's not one that's as widely known. Why is that? Before I answer that question, you're gonna have to tell me which song it is. I mean, I'm not a mind reader. <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, the next song is Near the Cross. Uh, okay. What was the inspiration for that song? Oh, I should have known it was in Near the Cross. It was a terrible time. I wanted to write a song and use the funds to support the church school that was in turn helping the blind community. There was a terrible cholera outbreak then and we were all advised to evacuate, but I, couldn't leave them, I just couldn't. So, it was suffering so much and they were so pleased that a few stayed behind to help. And when I walked amongst them, I felt their pain and shared their suffering. And the, the song near the cross just, just came to me. Praise him? Yes, that's what they want to sing next. Oh, okay, okay praise him.
hear from the congregation. They sat and listened to some of their favorites. I think it just might be time to ask them to join in. Yeah. And lend your voices to some of Fanny's favorites. And the one that comes to mind is tell me the story of Jesus.
for her work in the community. And you've heard of all the work that Fanny did with those suffering from cholera. They were abandoned by everybody. Now what really inspired Fanny? Was her love for the poor, the downtrodden? Was it superficial? Fanny gained a fortune with all the songs that she had written. But she died a pauper giving all her money to the poor. And if she lived and she breathed and she lived in the New York slums. And it was her life, her daily life in the New York slums that inspired her to write this beautiful song. Hallelujah. 
rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin in the grave. Yes, I would go out at least one night a week and walk among my boys. They were suffering so, and my heart bled for them. That was William Dion's music we just heard. He wrote the most wonderful music. Fanny wrote, Fanny, there was some amazing musicians that worked well with, assurance and its profound effect you know you know I'd have looked to Phoebe to proclaim what she discovered um, I just wondered if you'd like to introduce the next song well I've been a Christian all my life I was working hard for the Lord I was doing all the right things but my heart wasn't changed I remember attending a crusade and going up to the altar call three nights in a row and I said, Lord, if you don't make me feel your presence, how will I turn away from you? And there it was, I realized I was trying to please God by doing all these things. I was holding the world in one hand and Jesus in the other. And I realized that, I, that to be converted, all I had to do was let go of the world. Just let it go and be, be not do. In that moment, I was converted. I was converted and redeemed. So all I had to do was to proclaim it. That's it. It's as simple as that. Play for me, rescue the perishing. Play for me, rescue the perishing. You see, in Fanny's life, she spent so much time, as you've heard, witnessing and sharing with others. She spent so much time wanting to help the disadvantaged, those that were less fortunate, and that was the inspiration behind the song, Rescue the Perishing, of all the time she spent in the slums. She, she was paid one dollar, between one dollar and three dollars per song. She wrote over 9,000 songs. In the 1900s, that would have made her a very wealthy woman. But she was not wealthy because she spent her time sharing and giving to others and it was part of that experience that led her to write rescue the perishing so now i will just ask you i will ask you if she earned a fortune we sing her songs every week she earned a fortune she could have been a wealthy woman. When her husband died, her friend Phoebe paid for the funeral. So that shows you she gave away all her wealth because her friend paid for her husband's funeral. But why did she do that? She did that because she wanted to share all of her wealth with others. She wanted to bless 
those that were less fortunate. She wanted to do what God had commissioned us to do. And that was look after those that are less fortunate than us. And she didn't make a token gesture. She didn't just throw in a few extra coins after she'd taken care of all her business. She gave so much that she lived in a slum area of New York. She gave so much that her friend paid for her husband's funeral. So what will we give? What can we give? What should we give? What are we asked to do? What does our heart demand of us? What does our conscience demand of us? What does our will demand of us? That's all I ask you to do now as the deacons collect the offering. I just ask you to think, not just again because Fanny did it, but what inspired Fanny to do it? What was in her heart that made her share so much? Is that in our heart? Should that be in our heart? Did God ask for that to be in our heart? Are we missing something? Ponder those words just a little as the deacons and the deaconesses collect today's offering. What is our offering? What is it that we are offering? Who is the offering for? What is to happen with this offering? The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. But why? Because everything in the world is His. Everything in the world is His. So why does He ask us to give? Because He wants to change our hearts. He wants to change our lives. In the way that He changed Fanny's in the way that he led her to give all that she had.
Jesus, please just bow your heads. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity you have given us to draw our characters closer to you by sharing and showing love and showing, showing charity with each other. We pray, Father, that you will bless the offering that has been collected. Bless the hearts that gave. Bless the hearts that had not to give, but would have been willing. Bless the funds itself, that as it goes out to help others, that it may be stretched, that it may be to a good cause, that it may alleviate the suffering of some poor soul in some corner of the world. And bless us as we give, that we may truly understand the character that you want to put in our hearts, one of love, one of sharing, so bless us all as we continue with this program. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I made a thing of saying to you how Fanny gave away her wealth. That she could have been a wealthy woman, but she shared so much of it that she lived in the slums of New York. You see, we're not really just here to celebrate Fanny. We're really here to celebrate what God did in Fanny's life and how she was inspired and how we could possibly use that to inspire us. You see, as Fanny has alluded to, she too had down days, as may some of us. She too had dark days, as may some of us. But she always held on to her faith. And there were times when things were very, very shaky. There were times when things were not so good. And there were times when she just wanted to get back on track. And when she sat in her room, wanting to get back on track, the words of the song, redeemed, came to her heart. And we will share that with you now.
of my mother crushed me. It was such a terrible time. I was so bereft. And my dear friend, William Kirkpatrick, who wrote the music for Redeemed, he came to me, started playing this tune, and I think to console me. And the words just flooded out.
all, it seems like there was one tragedy on to the next. A little known fact is that Fanny and Alexandra actually had a baby. In the year 1859, Fanny gave birth to a healthy baby girl who unfortunately passed in her sleep after she was born. Now, we're not going to ask Fanny about that today because she still suffers from the deep grief and sadness that that occurrence brought about on her. And to be honest, she's never really spoken about it to anyone publicly until very shortly prior to her death in 1925. Um, on a brighter note, um, one day she was home and her good friend, Mr. James Kirkpatrick, dropped by and he had written a piece of music with which he had wanted her to compose a hymn to so that he could use it in the service for that exact same week. Now the only problem was that William had to catch a train that was due to leave in 35 minutes. Well, Fanny being a praying, praying lady as she is, and as was her custom, she knelt and she prayed. Something she did every single time before beginning to write her hymns. She then turned to her friend James and she said, Your words say to me, safe in the arms of Jesus. <laughs> Fanny scribbled those words into to the song on a piece of paper and then thrust them in James's hand. And would you believe it, he actually made his train. Out of the 9,000, yes, that's 900 times 10 songs that have been written by Fanny J. Crosby. Her favorite is, of all time, safe in the arms of Jesus.
10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from any evil appearance in our conscience and with our bodies washed with pure water. It was with a conversation with a dear friend, William Doan, with whom she had done much good work. <clears throat> As they parted, they shared this Bible text, which consolidated Fanny's belief on the need for full recon reconciliation to Christ's original design, the way he created us to live from the very beginning. Despite all the pain and dismay that was surrounding Fanny, she just so much wanted to be nearer to him. No, my 
Oh dear, I've been here. My song, your song, sorry, your song, my, I mean, our song, what? has been voted the best fine J. Crosby song ever. Yes, all right, Phoebe. You've already heard Blessed Assurance. No, you don't understand. It's reached, it's changed, it's reached a much wider audience. Reaching souls that we so much more than we even, even know. With God is good. With my words? And my music. It, they've changed it just a little, but yes. Do you like it? I love it. Well, yes, of course you love it. It's yours.
for a goodly time yet. I am happy however people interpret my music. As long as it's shared out there with God, I'm happy. When asked, when asked the secret of her prolific skills, Fanny said, when I wish to write, I say a prayer and ask God for the words and he simply sends them to me. And when asked if she was better all her life after being, having me blind by a negligent mistake, what did she say? What was that? Sorry. <clears throat> I was saying, when asked why you were embittered for all your life after having been made blind by a negligent mistake, what did you say? Well, I just want my words to be spread, people to sing along happily. That's all I could ask. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to end this musical session this session that's honored the music of Fanny J. Crosby with one more song that I'd like the choir to sing. So come on up for me, please.
me to worship today. We praise the Lord. I told you we came here to worship today. Did you worship? Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. You have heard the songs. You have heard the songs. You have listened to the words. You have done some of the singing. And the life of Fanny has been engrafted into your testimonies. But what is your song? What is your song? If you had a chance to write a song, what would be your song? What would be your song? What would be your words? What would be your song? Pain? Suffering? Or rejoicing? Oh, thank you. What would be your song? We're inviting you back later to come back so that you can get your song out later. But right now, in the next 30 seconds, I'd like you to understand that this was not a show. This is not a show. This is worship, people. We're giving God what we have. We're giving God what we have. Just want to thank the musicians who gave God today their praises. I want to thank the choirs today that gave God their praises. The children, the actors who gave God their praises. Mark in particular who put this together in terms of the actors. I want to thank Sheila who put this together on this our music day. Our director, Colin. Band director, Sammy. We want to thank them for what they did in the house of God today. The choir, we want to thank them for what they did in the house of God today. We are thanking them. But supreme, supreme thanks goes to God. Supreme praises goes to God. Supreme glory goes to God. Our God, who is awesome, who is excellent, who has brought you here today, who has taken you out of sin, who has taken you out of darkness, who has given you eternal life. Eternal life. Do not take this for granted. Do not think this is a show. Do not take this for granted. Do not take this for granted. This is not a show. We thank God. I'm giving you the opportunity. I'm giving you the opportunity to say to God, pass me not. Pass me not. It would be sad if you came here today and experienced this and left the same way. It would be sad if I left the same way. God, do not pass me by. So you know what? I'm going to give you the opportunity. If you do not want God to pass you by, stand, let me pray with you. Stand, let me pray with you. Oh God, our Father, Father of Jacob, Abraham, God, we give you thanks and we give you praise that you have put words in the mouth of songwriters to praise you and that we can look and, and we can reflect and reminisce on these songs and take testimonies from these songs for our lives that we live right now. But Lord, help us to have a testimony, a personal testimony. Help us to realize that you are the one who woke us up this morning, that you are the one who is paying our bills. Father, some people are here, dear Lord, pained, relationship problem, problems on the job, problems in terms of health. Oh God, oh God, oh God. The same God who took us across the Red Sea. The same God who took us out of Egypt. You promised. You promised. You said in your word, all we need to do is believe. So God, as we stand before you this morning as a sentiment, take away our unbelief and help us, dear Lord, that as you pass, we will reach out in our minds and think about you, the wonderful things. We will reach out and touch you. 
so that you will not pass us by and that we will be saved when you come. Everybody here, I pray for the Lord. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We continue to worship God as we go. Launch it provided for you.